Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Nathan with the ebook reader blog. So uh, I'm going to do a comparison between the Nook Glowlight 3 here on the left and the Kindle Paperwhite 3 on the right. So the Nook Glowlight 3 is somewhat like the older Nook Touch. It's got the page buttons. It's got the end button below the screen. It's got that soft textured back. It's got kind of rounded corners. Um, it is quite comfortable to hold and with your finger resting on a page button. So um, the page buttons do work pretty well. They're a little bit slower than swiping the screen but I do like having the page button options and you got the nook button it takes you home uh, so Kindle Paperwhite 3 it doesn't have any kind of page buttons or anything uh, it just has a power button here on the bottom along with the USB port so it's got the same kind of texture on the back they both kind of feel the same uh, and it's got the rounded corners as well so uh, the nook has a more indented screen because it's got the infrared touch screen so it's a little bit more recessed the Paperwhite has a capacitive touch screen um, so the, the Nook, it's a little bit larger. You've got, it's a little bit wider and a little bit taller. They both have the same six inch ink screen uh, with 300 pixel per inch. They both look quite good. Uh, the Nooks, it, with the infrared screen, it just it seems to have a little bit more darker blacks. Just That's just kind of how infrared screens are because this one's got the capacitive. It looks good too. But the Nooks just looks a little bit sharper. So let's talk about the front lights here. They both have front lights, but the thing with the Nook is it has the adjustable color temperature. So you can, uh, you know, set it to an orange color if you'd like for reading at night. Uh, you can sort of blend the colors as well. So the Kindle, it just has that one standard color. So definitely the one big difference with the Nook, you got the page buttons and you got the adjustable front light color. So uh, the, they both um, have a good range of front lights and then they both have like good color for the front lights. So they're both like sort of like in the middle with that setting as max them out. The camera kind of adjusts, but you can get kind of an idea what it looks like. So with the Nook, you can kind of blend it. You can also set it to like automatically adjust as the day's, day goes on to get a little bit more orange color. Um, so like the front light colors are different. You can kind of tell the Nook has a little bit different color. The lower end of the spectrum or the cool end of the spectrum than the Kindles. They're both a little bit different. So let's go ahead and adjust the lights down a little bit. Don't you know, almost never use them at full blast unless you're like, I don't know, outside or something, but then you kind of don't really need it on. So, um, like the key with front lights is to have them like as low as possible, just get a little bit of a glow on the screen when you're reading in the house. But uh, yeah, again, they kind of have different colors, but let's go ahead and talk about some of the software features. So, they both have uh, various font sizes, various font types you can choose from, kind of have a similar uh, layout. They don't really have comparable fonts, so I'm not even going to try to get these fonts to look the same. I like Malabar on the Nook. Uh, Bookerly on the Kindle, they do, both definitely look different. So the Nook has the different options for thin, th regular, and thicker for bold, and the Kindle has the boldness slider, so you can go up to five. You can customize the weight of the font. So uh, they kind of have like the similar line spacing and margin settings, uh, justification, so you can go ragged right as well on both of these. Uh, so one thing with the uh, Kindle is it has landscape mode. So the Nook, for whatever reason, they never added landscape mode to it. So if you like reading this way, that is an option on the Kindles. Um, so the Kindles do have that reading progress indicator. The Nook kind of has one too, uh, in the right corner. So the cool thing with the Nook page buttons is if you hold the buttons, you can fast page scan. And if you hit the buttons twice, it'll go from chapter to chapter. So then Kindle, you can kind of jump around the chapters too. If you swipe up from the bottom and use this page scan feature, you can navigate by the chapters that way. You don't have the page buttons, of course. So uh, another thing with the Kindle is you can view with the multiple pages at once, sort of scan through this way. And then when you go to one location, you can go back uh, by hitting that location button in the bottom corner. So like I said with the Nook, you got that reading timer here too on the bottom right. And then you can jump pages using the dial. They both have table of content support. So you can jump around the parts of a book that way. So Kindle is generally a bit faster, more responsive. Uh, the Nook runs Android. It's usually a little bit more less optimized for ink than uh, some other devices. So the Kindle, they've been working on the software forever. So they both have... The dictionary, if you can open the full dictionary on the Nook, for some reason they use like lighter text on the dictionary. And then the Kindle, you have the dictionary window. You also have Wikipedia and translations you can swipe to as well. So uh, you don't really have any translation features or like Wikipedia lookup on the Nook. Uh, they both have, you know, the regular notes and highlights. You got the sharing options. So they got a lot of overlap in features. Um, it just sort of depends though. Like uh, the Kindle has more like advanced features. So like you've got WordWise um, and you've got like the vocabulary builder. So the Nook kind of has a similar thing where it keeps track of the words you look up in the dictionary. That's what the vocabulary builder does on the Kindle. So like on the uh, table of contents page, if you like 
go over to one of the other sections there. So you have the notes and highlight sections, and then you can open that up on your Kindle too. So the Kindle has the exporting notes option, so the Nook doesn't have any way to export your notes. So that's a big advantage for the Kindle, of course. Uh, so like I was saying with the lookups, it keeps track of all the words you looked up, so it's kind of like a vocabulary builder. Uh, the Kindle also adds more advanced stuff like X-Ray. So this is really cool because you can look up characters and terms in about a book. The other day I was trying to start a second book in a series and I didn't want to read the first book again. You can go back into like the first book and read some stuff about it. Get like remember um, some of the characters and what was going on if you don't want to reread the whole thing. So they both have bookmarks, of course, the Kindles. You can um, like jump to different bookmarks. It shows your other bookmarks on this list as well. So the Nook you add and remove by tapping there. With the Nook, it'll stay on for multiple pages because just the way it calculates pages, as you see at the bottom, it's still on 242. So um, with Kindle, it just stays with it, whatever page you added. So uh, just a quick look at PDFs. Uh, Kindle has this contrast darken feature, which makes it nice for PDFs. And Kindles also have the landscape mode again. So Nooks, th again, don't have the landscape mode. So that really kind of helps with PDFs. Uh, PDFs are a bit faster on the uh, Kindle as well, and you've got like pinch zooming. Um, you can also double tap to like get rid of the margins. There's like no zooming at all in the Nook. Page speeds are a bit faster on the Kindle, but as you can see, it does the full page refresh every time. That's one kind of cool thing with the Nook is it does the partial refresh uh, on PDFs. So like you can't really set it on the Nook. The Kindle you can turn it on and off for eBooks, and then it'll only do it like at the chapters. With PDFs, it always does it. So uh, they both have like the usual on-screen features. If you like hold down. On PDFs, uh, words and PDFs, you can use the dictionary and notes and highlights and stuff like that. So um, it, the Kindle does have some extra features when it comes to the PDFs, um, and it's just a little bit snappier. And then, of course, like the landscape mode definitely helps too. But neither of these devices are, you know, going to be a big time PDF reader. But uh, obviously, the advantage with the Nook, the page buttons, you got the adjustable front light, and you can set it to manual or auto. Uh, so then the Kindle has some more like software features, like more re more refined software. You got some extra stuff like the X-Ray and the uh, vocabulary builder and WordWise and stuff like that. So you can also plug in some uh, speakers, uh, like a an audio adapter to the Kindle, and like use Voice View. To, it's like an accessibility feature. And then Kindle also has like this, you know, navigation where you can go from the uh, panel view for comics. So it has some more advanced features than Nooks, but. Uh, the Nook it supports PDF and EPUB, and the Kindle supports, you know, Kindle formats and also supports some others as well. So you can also send ebooks to Kindles, which makes it a bit easier. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this comparison review right here. Check out, you know, the ebook reader YouTube channel for full reviews of both of these. Uh, same with the ebook reader blog for comparisons and reviews of pretty much all the e readers available. So thank you guys for watching. Bye.